Okay guys, our next topic is electric charge and electric current. If there is an electric pressure or simply voltage applied to a conductor, it will give a lateral motion to its free electrons. Then there will be a charge. Or simply, electric charge is created when free electrons is transferred to or removed from an object. The unit of charge is in columns. For a negatively charged electrons, it is 1.59 times 10 raised to negative 19 columns. Or you can also say that 1 column is equal to 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 electrons. To solve the average electric current guys, we have the formula I is equal to Q over T. Or we can use the triangle formula to easily memorize the formula just like Ohm's law. For the triangle formula guys, just remember that the operator involved in this horizontal line here is division, while the vertical line here is multiplication. I is for the current in amperes, Q is for charge in columns, and T is for the time in seconds during electron moves. So we know already that the primary formula is I is equal to Q over T. So if you want to find I current, just put any finger at the letter I. Then you will notice that letter Q and T remain. And the operation involved between Q and T is division. So simply, I is equal to Q divided by T. To solve for charge, use the triangle formula. Just put your thumb or any finger at the letter Q. Then as you can see, to solve for Q, we have to multiply current I to time T. And to solve for time t, just put any finger on the letter t. Then as you can see, the formula is q divided by i, or charge divided by the current. By the way guys, from certain conductors, there are number of electrons that are free to move, which are shown in the table. Okay, for copper, we have 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electrons per cubic inch. For silver, we have 1.68 times 10 raised to 24. For the aluminum, we have 10 raised to 24 electrons per cubic inch. Later guys, we will use the table to solve problems. So now guys, we go to the examples. For number 1, the current in a conductor changes uniform from 0 to 2 amperes in 3 seconds, remains steady at 2 amperes from 6 seconds then drops uniformly to 1.5 amperes in 8 seconds. Calculate the total amount of charge transferred in the elapsed time of 17 seconds. So based on the problem, the required is the charge Q. So the formula would be I multiplied by time in seconds. The solution is just to add the charges created in 17 seconds. Based on the solution, first you have to get the average of 0 to 2 amperes then multiplied by 3 then plus 6 multiplied by 2 and lastly 8 amperes multiplied by 1.5 charge transferred in the elapsed time of 17 seconds is 27 columns so we go now for example number 2 calculate the number of free electrons in a copper conductor having a diameter of 0 0.064 inch and a length of 1000 feet so first, we have to solve for its volume in cubic inch. Volume is equal to area multiplied by the length. So the area is equal to pi d squared over 4 multiplied by the length. So substituting the values in the formula, we will have pi multiplied by 0 0.064 squared divided by 4, then multiplied by 1000 feet, which is the length. We have to convert the length in inches so we have to multiply it by 12 so as a result we have 38.6 cubic inch so next we will use the table since the conductor is copper we will use free electrons per cubic inch of copper so to get the free electrons we have to multiply the volume multiplied by the value in the table so we will have 38.6 cubic inch multiplied by 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electrons per cubic inch. So the result will be 6.33 times 10 raised to 25 free electrons. So the free electrons in a copper conductor having a diameter of 0.064 inch and length of 1000 feet 
will be 6.33 times 10 raised to 25 okay guys the last topic would be electron velocity and conductors for the electron velocity and conductors we have the formula v is equal to electron per second divided by electron per inch the unit of electron velocity of conductor is inch per second electron per second which have the value of 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 is derived from 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 electrons per column 1 ampere of current involves a motion of 1 column per second. So to get electron per second, we have 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 electron per column multiplied by I which is the current. Which the unit of I is in column per second. So we have 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 electron per column times I column per second the column will be cancelled out so we have 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 electron per second next electron per inch is derived from one inch of conductor that contains a cross-sectional area a in a square inch and each one cubic inch of conductor will have 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electron from the table so 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electron per cubic inch can be written as 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electron inch multiplied by the area. Since the unit of area is in square inch, then square inch will be cancelled out. So the value would be 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electron per inch. So using the two, we can now solve for the formula for electron velocity. So we now have 6.28 times 10 raised to 18 electron per second times I divided by 1.64 times 10 raised to 24 electron per inch multiplied by the area. The electron is cancelled out so we have 3.83 times 10 raised to negative 6 multiplied by the current divided by the area where I divided by A is the current density or simply we can rewrite the formula for electron velocity which is equal to 3.83 times 10 raised to negative 6 delta and take note guys it is only applicable for copper conductor since we use the constant for copper conductor an electron per cubic inch and guys is the electron velocity for silver and aluminum so now we go to the example example number three a number 12 copper wire common to house wiring installations has a cross-sectional area of 0.00513 square inch calculate the electron velocity when conductor current is 15 amperes so to calculate the electron velocity we just have to substitute it to the formula 3.83 times 10 raised to negative 6 times the current divided by the cross-sectional area so the answer guys is 0.0112 inch per second 